Hi. So uh, my name is Gunnar Volmsjö, uh, professor emeritus from uh, or at uh, Linnaeus University, uh, Växjö, Sweden, and um, I'm going to talk about what is the value of industrial robots and how can we assess the return on investment. Uh, challenging question. Um, I'm the author of uh, the book Industrial Robotic Technology that is available from Student Literatur and uh, at least in the Nordic countries at, uh, for example, at Libris uh, online bookstore, uh, maybe elsewhere as well, I'm not sure exactly. This talk was um, made at uh, the conference uh, Robot Based Automation held uh, on 13th 14th of September 2023 this year and um, it is, was organized by uh, SWIRA, Swedish Robot Association, it's a branch organization for companies uh, developing or delivering um, robot stations or robot systems for industry or robots. Okay, here we go. So a short background about myself. So my interest in industrial robots started in the early 80s as a PhD student, that's quite some time ago, and the areas of interest related to offline programming, sensors, manufacturing processes such as GMA welding, grinding, deburring, and similar things, uh, which actually was in the development phase at the time. And um, in addition to that, I had some projects within robotics or using robots in healthcare during the 90s and after the millennium and participated in more than 10 EU projects in robotics. Uh, and then I worked at Lund University, um, the engineering faculty, LTH, uh, University West in Trollhättan, um, close to Gothenburg and Linnaeus University in uh, Växjö. I thought it was quite nice to go around at different places and uh, meet people and uh, uh, see how things turn up, so to say, and contribute in many ways. And now I'm retired and have been worked on writing a book during the last year, just a robotic technology. And for those who uh, wonders, uh, I'm already on an update for that one. So um, that will be for the next, next printing, so to say. Anyway, so what is the value of industrial robots? Um, I had to actually check it. Um, I could easily do the same on Wikipedia or any uh, web, uh, I mean, on Google or whatever, I would get similar answers. So increased productivity, no breaks, higher, higher output, improved quality, high prediction at the consistent level, reducing defects, uh, cost savings through reduced labor cost and increased efficiency, flexibility, robots can be reprogrammed and used for different tasks, safety work environment, 24 seven operation, data collection, competitive advantage and so forth. But when you Google this or you ask OpenAI or GPT or whatever it is, um, it is on this level. Uh, you don't get any details about it, really. You have to dig yourself say, into this subject. The obvious and the simple is if you have conditions like consistent manufacturing conditions, you have a manufacturing volume matching one or more robots. You have operations and tasks that are matched by robot specifications. One or a few products with simple and quick setup procedures changing between those. Um, and you have a low requirement for control or complex sensors and a two shift operation or more. Then in my view and many people's view automation with the robot is the obvious choice. Um, there have to be reasons why you are not automated it, um, which could be many, of course. Uh, but if it is like this, you have to ask yourself, or you will ask yourself with and what, with what and how 
I mean, it is really jungle out there. There is not one manufacturer of robots. There is not one vendor um, integrating systems for companies and so on. So there are really many options. And how do I know I'm making it right? How does it affect me or the company or the manufacturing process or the operation on the shop floor? And what is the best solution? Many people have asked me, what is the best robot? It, it's, it's not as stupid question as one could think about, but what is best is actually, it has to be redefined in a way. I mean, for what purpose? I mean, it's like in buying a car. I mean, uh, Ferrari, is that better than a Volkswagen Polo? I mean, it really depends, so to say. For what use? I mean, uh, what is the expectations? That's, is it only to take me from A to B or what is it about? And it is the same in this, in this area, so to say. So you have to be able to identify and prioritize your needs. What are they? Why do they provide some value for the operations? Explore and create your own knowledge within the field. And if you've done that, together with your requirements, you will be able to have some basic ideas about actually hmm, what kind of robot systems would be feasible in this case. And then you can start to talk to other people, other companies get some new fresh ideas, so to say, be open to other people's solutions, maybe go into dialogue with system integrators. Now you might think that should I talk to those uh, who might um, sell to me before I even have a contract with them? Yeah, why not? Usually, I would say in almost all cases, system integrators uh, they think long term because a robot system uh, is likely to be in operation for more than 10 years, maybe 15 years. So there will be service agreements, there will be um, new systems may be needed in the future. Um, they want to have customers that uh, they have a dialogue with uh, along the line, so to say, along uh, the timeline, uh, over a longer period of time. So a dialogue could be feasible in many ways. Maybe they have reference uh, systems they can show to you uh, and explain that this is the way we did it in this way. And uh, actually to get you on track about what is needed, so to say. Investment assessment and an analysis, if you look at it from a financial point of view, uh, there are many ways to look at things, uh, including robot systems. Um, and uh, I explain it in the book actually more in detail, but uh, just to have an idea about this, in my view, uh, I mean, you can view it in another way, but um, it is reasonable to put up a framework budget for any kind of investment, so to say, for an automation product. Now, that may change along the way, because um, requirements may change. Uh, it could be bigger or smaller, but I mean, things happen, you know. So maybe you come up to uh, some findings that require more about the project than what's anticipated in the beginning for some reasons uh, and, and and it grows so much that you cannot continue things happens you never know but anyway in those cases prioritize based on value creating features make reasonable assumptions about the future and do some kind of risk assessment managing reasonable changes and if needed shrink a little bit until it fit within the framework budget. That is uh, a recommendation, so to say. And often use me methods then, relates to those for payback, when is the investment paid back? 
net present value consists considers the time value money and uses a discount rate set by the company usually in range of 10 to 15 20 percent or whatever I mean, it, it used to be in those ranges um, converting future payments into present day value and then we have internal rate of return that uses the same date and equation as the net present value but calculates that the discount rate iterator iteratively and then uh, last return on investment which is often calculated as a mean over several years now in most cases if you have a, a tactical based um, investment tactical in the in the way that we look ahead a year maybe maximum two years quite short time of paying back the investment um, I would say that the the most used in those cases relates to the payback um, method maybe um, with some eyes about others also but anyway i talk about this now because that is the most simple and um, the others are described in the book or elsewhere uh, where the payback period is the total investment divided by the yearly cash flow now the cash flow can be very different from different years of course but now we have to um, adjust for different costs also so it has to be some kind of mean value or estimated mean value because we talk about the future you don't know really but you have an idea about okay what are you going to gain about this and typically I would say when we talk about fairly simple robot solutions you know pretty well what they will how they will perform you can expect something um, about the payback between 12 and 24 months um, give or take it's say 18 months give or take six it really depends also uh, is this the first robot station you automate in or have you some similar experience if you have a similar robot station so this kind of copy paste situation if it is a copy paste situation the payback is is, um, is uh, quite easily compared to the one you have already and uh, it should be quite easy to to get it paid back in a short time if it is the first one you have to consider uh, to boosting your uh, staff I mean you have to have uh, operators updated with training you have to have maintenance in place you have to have some programming of the robots and so forth so that costs money and time so to say so things may be very different now if you look at the investments usually you compare different solutions and if you go back to then to the payback method it is often the cash flow in comparison with an alternative situation or sol solution adjusted for costs and that was the very much the, the situation before the millennia especially in the 80s that you had a manual operated system or station with some operations that should be robotized so you take away the some one or a few people and put in a robot to do the same task that is usually not the case today so you have a situation with a manual versus a robot or in many cases uh, the manual is not an option uh, because of many, many many reasons the manufacturing processes are not suitable to do uh, it manual so to say so there had to be different uh, types of robot automated solutions so you have different variants and compare it to other robot variants so to say for automation and when you compare do you compare it with exactly the same or different operations or subtasks because in some cases one robot might be added with more tasks than the other one or a manual 
operation, so to say, and how do you make adjustments for costs around the station or costs around the people or staff, so to say. Um, so it's quite complicated in some cases. And then you add qualitative parameters such as quality, you performance, in-process quality control you can perform using your robot, uh, deliver on time and the right quantity, for example. Um, and a way to get around this might be to identify costs for different operations, which can be then compared, so to say. But having said that, things can be, can be quite complicated and might not let's say add so much to the decision really. So instead I propose to identify key indicators to guide you in the right direction. What are uh, important for your operations? And focus on those, prioritize on those. Another thing which is really important is to search information. And uh, when we look at investments, uh, we make assumptions about the future. And that are just that, an assumption. So different numbers, when we assume something, can give very different results. Many companies, they predict that we will make that and that sale in one or two or three years for those products. Identify the worst and best accepted and possible outcomes. I mean, of course, you, you want to sell as much as possible, but if you, if you think in that direction, uh, you will end up with a robot system that uh, produce or is capable to produce so much that you would never sell it. It's, it's just not possible. It, that will never happen, so to say. So you have to uh, really think um, in an economical way. Uh, I mean, what is the worst case we can go down to and still make money? And for the same system, how much can it produce in the best possible way? And if we go for that one, is it possible to incrementally um, invest in more if really we sell more? Probably we won't do it, but anyway. It's important to, to think about it beforehand um, and identify how different areas can be expanded. It could also relate to um, different uh, quality requirements or requirements related to manufacturing processes involved in many other things. And then comparison with other alternatives, manual or semi-automatic production like quality, capacity, manufacturing processes, protective features uh, needed or that might be needed in the future, working environment or changes for that in the future, access to, to, to staff, I mean, or upgrade of staff or retraining or whatever. And um, also think about other alternative automation solutions if they exist. And um, Identify then quantitative and qualitative key performance indicators. I mean, what is important for this and what is to be achieved and what do we automate really? And related to this then, together with the um, f financial considerations, think about the level of automation and flexibility required. Uh, where should we put it, so to say, at what level. So basically we have, I mean, we can have as many options as, as, as we like, so to say, but typically we can end up with a fairly simple one where we have um, the same type of manufacturing operations for more than two years ahead. Um, we have stable conditions we think about with very few unplanned stops and um, operations suitable to be performed by a robot and we have a production volume that means more than two shifts operation or equal to that and well the question is why isn't it already automated by robots and if not we initiate an automation projects based on 
the fulfillment of several key indicators and then we just go ahead so to say because this is going to be very good uh, but with the question mark here uh, below if we have manufacturing operations that might change more than once per year or many times even per week per per month or per week so to say we have unclear conditions when manufacturing new variants or products we have that most operations in principle are suitable to be performed with the robot but um, requires several different operations or products to fill it so to say uh, in 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 production with uh, two shifts or more so to say and uh, it requires a high flexibility possibly some adapted for collaboration with an operator then it might still be a very good case for robot automation but uh, based i would say on strategic considerations and decisions uh, because we don't know, really know i mean there are many risks involved so to say so the company has to consider this and uh, have uh, some thoughts about hey we are going to learn something about this this is important because it might be quality concerns or we have to go with this in the future this is a good starting project so the next one will be high, uh, less risky more profitable and so on so at some point you have to move on so to say in this direction and then that will be the decision so make priorities and assumptions so how does it affect so we have the needs to the left and we have some assumptions about the future which could relate to competition uh, the market uh, different product variants or it will be changes in the way products will be made and so forth we have new technologies coming along like materials manufacturing processes methods sensors and so on to be used and we have other things could be geopolitical dimensions like the environment sanctions uh, conflicts uh, whatever happens in the future and based on this in a way we make assumptions how does it look today we know it pretty well hopefully in a year in three years and we just draw some sketches uh, along the way and or have some excel sheets or whatever sheets or whatever and and then we think about uh, hey this is gonna be great if we have this capacity we can sell this much and we will have this kind of profit over the years is it realistic or just a, a desire or wishing so to say mm, in a way i mean <sighs> It's like guessing stock prices because the i mean if you think about it the accuracy of the forecasting is pretty well today and within a week or two or a month maybe but along the line the timeline here in one year two years three years of time the accuracy of the forecasting will go down drastically so whatever we think it will happen will be something totally different in the future and it is the same in investing in whatever you're investing including robot systems so if we are not prepared for changes the expected profit can easily become a loss so what we counteract that with is flexibility and an ability to make reconfiguration of the systems to change over time and needed changes might be the next six months or the next year or the next two years in time if we are lucky or th three years or whatever but it will happen i mean look at it if you go back some years ships landed in the Suez channel we have a pandemic, we have component shortages, we have regional and global conflicts or wars, 
trade wars, climate and environment and uh, as much as possible. I mean, everything happens all the time. And for the future, we don't know. It might be really nice in the next five years or it might be the, the opposite. We don't know really. We have to be able to adapt. So it's about adding flexibility in and capability to reconfigure systems. Um, on the right, it could be related to a risk analysis. What happens if that happens? What? How do we handle it? And that could actually be um, analysis, uh, analyzed uh, within a simulation. Um, so how are we affected if we change factor X? Which could be shortage of supply, uh, raise the interest rate by, or inflation rate changes by or whatever we don't know or if there will be a new competi comp uh, competitive uh, situation so to say hmm. so a robot can do many different things so why not take advantage of it if it is reasonable and adds value to what we are doing if not we have to think about can this kind of flexibility be added later on or can we uh, plan for add this at the later stage um, because what's interesting is that if you really maximize maximize everything uh, the cost will be maximized as well now you can uh, see it in many different ways uh, one is the cost of the investment what you pay so to say when you get it the other is the running cost um, so you have to think about two, both things really but uh, in most cases um, be reasonable in, about this so add what you think is needed in some reasonable time of interest within a year or something like that and uh, plan for adding things like options or whatever what it will it be uh, getting knowledge about that what options are available so to say conditions for easy resetting or change over might be import important with the same or similar manufacturing process that is you don't change, I mean, a, a robot adapted for gas metal arc welding or spray painting. You don't easily change that to something completely different. Uh, at least there is a really good reason for it. And um, if change over to other manufacturing processes is extensive, then uh, and requires different equipment, usually you don't do that. You have to have a good reason for that, so to say. Um, but there are there are uh, cases when it could be of interest, uh, for example, to be able to move the whole robot station to another place. And there are some systems that are quite interesting in that area, but special cases. And um, then you have to think about increased flexibility can lead to increased complexity. And increased complexity can lead to uh, increased costs or problems related to maintenance, service, and many other things. And then you relate to the maintenance program operator skill. I mean, you have to have staff that is updated, so to say, to manage all things. So the way ahead is create employee engagements, update skills and experience and create strategy with prioritized quantitative and qualitative key figures that will help you because in some cases the the future profit is very hard to to um, to, to um, calculate or measure uh, you can measure uh, afterwards i mean how good was it but this is also playing with the with the figures, so to say, because uh, you you can always fix the figures in a way, uh, but you have to look at the whole picture. Uh, was it good? 
did we compete with the with the other companies we are competing with normally uh, did we make it because usually there are many other uh, parameters than just the um, the um, quantitative that ca that counts it could be that are we able to deliver on time with the white quantity at the white quality and are the um, uh, is this a really uh, important factor for the for the customer so to say um, and if that is the case maybe we are on the right track so to say and then be active in a way within networks industry institutes academia if that is ever possible um, look out for conferences uh, within the area that fits your scope so to say fair trades system integrators and vendors are great to visit and uh, happy to talk to you and explore i mean what is happening in the world geopolitical events any summary and some closing words improve your experience and knowledge and create corporate strategy and update it uh, i would recommend update those things every six six months or whatever is needed and changes on a norm uh, you make plans that is good but uh, be prepared that plans need to be updated all the time so to say and dare to try sometimes it could be just good to have a system or equipment that you try new things with so to say or in collaboration with other companies or system integrators thank you for watching bye